Yeah, it sounds like it's a bit of a strengths and weaknesses analysis. And then how looking through that lens at the certainly the marketplace, it sounds like your ecosystem that you're developing, but also the market as a whole, how when you start to go into that space with that perspective, you can actually look for and identify earlier on ways that third party companies, right? Folks that are not certainly a direct part of your business can work with you to elevate the entire customer lifecycle. It was interesting, actually, it makes me think of I was talking to a CRO actually earlier today, um, funny enough, and he was describing how their cycle right now, their business cycle is done really, really well in terms of they've been evolving and iterating their messaging. And um, and one of the comments they made was like, well, we're, we're really nailing top of the funnel awareness. Like people find the product that we, you know, we work with and they find us and we work together to educate that individual. But that that third party dynamic has been challenging because the product itself and that team are not wiki- working working with this partner, I should say, um, to be able to go and, and market better together and tell that story better of like, when we work with this product and you work with this partner, you know, the customer wins in that sense. For so sure. as you think about your own experience and exposure, when you are crafting that messaging, that opportunity, a lot of the earlier stage stuff that we're describing, because we know we can sell together, we can figure out the playbook, we can share sure. tools, sure. right? We can do all that. We know we can, in some ways, identify the opportunity in terms of why our businesses should work together. How do you then do that? What I mean specifically is we now know, I'll make it up really simply here. Like we know that, you know, our, our um, B2B tech, so just like call it our SaaS product, sure. helps customers to grow their, their business, like super agnostic, right? We, we grow their business. Yay. Right. And then working with this, uh, this partner, that partner can take the tool that we've built that helps them grow and help them grow more effectively and efficiently. How do you build? As you described it, the those mutual moments early. I'm picturing the listener hearing here, the audience saying, "Like, cool, I get that we should do that. We've probably heard that before in some regards, but how do I action it early and effectively to deliver the ROI to that CRO personality we were describing earlier?" Yeah, I, I think there's two elements of it. Going back to my garden, right? so yeah. when you go into a garden shop, you're not just going in blind. If you or if you go into Home Depot and you don't know what you want, you're just kind of you're not browsing. You, you're you doing, go by into the way. it. Uh, yeah, I can't go to Home Depot and not know what I want. My wife doesn't let me do that anymore. It's a whole project if I do. You, so you have to you have to go in with an intention. And I think the same thing that's goes good. with partnerships of like you go in with an intent. You know, like, all right, if I'm gonna prioritize that partnership with that type of SaaS provider or that type of consulting partner or implementation partner, you have an intent. Because I think the same thing applies to partnering with a, a hyperscaler. You have to come in with a point of view. You can't say like, show us all your programs and resources and let us pick our, uh, let let us pick our path. It doesn't work. It's going to take you 12, 18, 24 months even to figure out where to swim. And so like, I think it's very important and it's incumbent on every partner leader of like, develop your better together story and figure out where an AWS fits in, where a GCP and Azure fits in, or even where another ISV or SaaS provider fits in. Because if you don't, if you're going into it of like wishy-washy of maybe we should go this way, maybe we should go that way, you're, it's going to take you so much longer to get to where you want to go and where your competitors are already going. Um, and so developing that better together story, I think, is incumbent on every single partner later to understand where the gaps are in the market and where two different, two or three different partners can play in. Cool. All right. So, so to synthesize here at the end, then what I'm hearing is, you know, it's about being intentional. I'm hearing it's about mapping. And I think in some ways, perhaps this is about outcome based partnerships. This is about, I choose the show name. I wasn't intentional. I, um, I was going to say, no, just no pun intended. The great moment. Yeah, I love that. Everyone that was not plug. intentional. That <laughs> yeah, was a good plug. Yeah. Um, no, it's great. The other part of it, though, I think is, you know, being, uh, you know, solutioning based on that, right? So if you think about what your customer wants, if you identify as an ISV, as a solutions partner, as an agency, whatever you are, that your customer needs some sort of a uh, solution for their business that you perhaps don't incorporate today, the partnerships you identify are based off of that. So it's needs based. Would you agree with that? That's yeah, fair. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I think that's fair. So identifying need early and then building your partnerships or relationships based on that sounds like kind of the premise of our combo. It's super helpful. Um, as we wrap up today, anything else you want to add for the listeners, folks, you know, that can take away and, and action on here? I I think the biggest thing that I have always conveyed with partnerships is the, and this goes back to like an Amazon leadership principle, is that learn and be curious. 
Like if that. you, I, even though I tell you about like being intentional and having a point of view, like listen to your customers, listen to what your sales teams are saying, listen to what your, your partners are saying, listen, like, cause you can learn a lot from that. And, and then, you know, whether or not you want to apply it into your day to day or apply it into your next venture, like I scratch that itch. And you and I talked about the itch that, you know, I want to scratch down the road of like it, from this field and how you can apply this function to something. But I, yeah. I, I do think it's, it, it a lot of people's ignorance to learning and trying to to explore what else is out there for their own individual just knowledge base and also skill set, I think is super important, especially for for people early on in their partner journey. I love it. All right. So my takeaway is learn, grow, and the outcomes will follow. We're going to plug it again there. That was really good. <laughs> Brian, it's been awesome, man. I really enjoyed this chat. Uh, if folks want to get in touch, how do they find you? How do they reach out? Uh, LinkedIn is perfect. I really appreciate the time, Barrett. Yep. My pleasure. Folks, as always, thank you for listening, liking, subscribing, commenting, all the fun things that I ask you to do every single time. As always, please reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or ideas for the show, Brian, you were great. Thank you again for joining. This has been Outcomes. I'm your host, Barrett King. Take care, everyone. 